Hi, I'm Rhonda Kadish. I'm here with Tom Munn, arborist for the City of Hudson. We're here to discuss the city's leaf collection program and give some pointers to residents on making it a successful season. Throughout the video, uh, if, you, if you want, you can leave questions in the comments and we will be answering those uh, later on in, in the Facebook Live. So Tom, how many leaves are collected each year? 18,000 cubic yards. That's going to be about, <laughs> that's a lot. That's uh, five Olympic swimming pools. Uh, the Epcot uh, geodesic dome would fill it up about a fourth of the way. So quite a few. So the city collects leaves beginning in uh, or four, six weeks. Uh, when does the leaf collection actually start? October 23, Monday. So next week we're going to be picking up leaves. And um, how are the collection areas divided up? Well, it's kind of interesting. Hudson is uh, divided by routes 303 and 91 into four separate quarters or quadrants so that we do two quadrants each week. And once again, www.hudson.oh.us will tell when your particular quadrant is being picked up. Perfect. So um, when should residents place their leaves out based on their quadrant? Well, looking at the Monday pickup for your quadrant, we want to have the leaves out before 7 o'clock that Monday. So probably the weekend prior to your pickup date is the time to get the leaves next to the street. So what happens if I don't have my leaves out at 7 a.m. on Monday and I miss it? Will the truck come back? Absolutely. We do three pickups, which is probably uh, the most of any of our communities around us, and we'll be back in two weeks. So why is that deadline important of 7 a.m.? Oh, my goodness. 350 lane miles in Hudson to drive down. So that's like driving, you know, that's like trying to vacuum these leaves from here to Philadelphia. So it, it's quite a long ways to go. So we keep going to get the quadrant done, and then we'll be back. So where should residents place their leaves? A long, low row next to the street a long low row next to the street and why is this important well we're vacuuming uh, think of it like a big vacuum cleaner and when you vacuum your living room if we have it right out where it's not obstructed and it's easy to pick up we get it done faster and more completely and we do a better job for you so um, residents need to avoid things like ditches, gutters, and obstacles, trees, mailboxes, fire hydrants, and street lights, and, and that's because those are, are obstacles similar, as you said, to furniture? Yes. Imagine you're vacuuming around the, the dining room table without taking out the chairs or the coffee table. You can't get all the dirt. Same thing with the leaves. If the leaves are not near lampposts, fire hydrants, trees, mailboxes, then we can do a much better job, get more leaves, and, and, and once again, leave a cleaner front yard for you and your neighbors. So is, it, uh, is collection for leaves only, or can I put other items like brush or twigs in my pile? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> you ever run over something with your house vacuum cleaner, you know, maybe a penny or, or, or uh, a paper, and you have to take your vacuum cleaner apart to, to unclog it? Well, the same thing with these big vacuums. If we have sticks, they'll clog it up, and then the vacuum is back of the shop, and we're trying to fix the clog in the tube and in the motor instead of picking up your leaves. So leaves only, very important. So if I, if I do put things like that out, you're not going to pick up my leaves? Well, I'll probably put one of these cards on your door. And this card has pictures of good examples and bad examples and and also an area where it will be check marked as to why we did not pick up your leaves we wanted to but they were not put in a fashion that either we could pick them up without clogging our machine or they were too far to reach because the hose this is far as it goes and we'll show that to you should I be concerned, like today, if I see the leaf crew in my neighborhood and it's not time for my scheduled pickup? Don't be concerned, no worries, because we'll be back. Uh, you ever hear the expression, make hay while the sun shines? Well, the sun's shining today and the leaves are light and fluffy, 
and we can go very fast when the leaves are light and fluffy, but part of our leaf program is going to be a 40 degree rain or snow flurries. So we may be out in your area a little bit earlier on a sunshiny day to get the leaves while they're fluffy and light and we can go like crazy. So um, let's pull the leaf back up and see how it works. If you're watching at home once again and you have any questions, feel free to uh, put them in the comment box and Tom will uh, give his, his best answers. And once again, uh, the earlier question about leaves in the ditch. Oh my goodness. We, rain, we get so much rain in October, November that we don't want to have flooding. Ditches are for water, not leaves. Very important. So Tom's going to, uh, Tom, are you going to show us or is the leaf crew going to show us uh, how the vacuum actually works? We're going to have Matt jump out here real quick. Okay. <laughs> and show us how the hose uh, operates. Okay. Matt has done this for a number of years now and is a seasoned professional. So Matt, you're going to show us how uh, how far the hose reaches. Yes, I will. Tom, we'll let you narrate what Matt's doing here. All righty, here just showing basically the <laughs> here's the hose. It's uh, hydraulically operated, and there's the hose, the action, and that's as far as it goes. So. We want to get the leaves, see we see uh, leaf piles to the left and to the right as our good example and the pile that's a little bit too far back as the bad example. So this pile right here in front of us that Dan's looking at is probably going to get a white card on their doorknob? This definitely is a white card situation. We'll pick up what leaves we can, but once again, our job is to get down the road. Now think of our leaf program in total. 350 miles, we do three pickups. That's 1,050 miles. So basically, we're picking up leaves from here to Miami or from here to Dallas, Texas. So we're trying to make this as efficient and streamlined as possible so we can do our best possible job for you. So what I'm also, uh, I guess, getting from what you're saying about the long and low is that I could have leaves right where Matt has the hose right now, but my pile is actually extending back this far. You're not going to get my whole pile, and this is still going to be left and probably get a door hanger. That is correct. Also, uh, the big pile, they, the leaves will compact. They'll, they'll actually compact into like a big, thick pile of cement, and then once again, they're harder to pick up. A long, low row stays less compacted and is less impact on your lawn. And as you stated, the back of the pile will get picked up because it's not too far for the hose to physically reach. So should we have uh, Matt fire up the leaf vacuum and demonstrate uh, what works and what doesn't work? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and back up the truck. And we'll start at the very start here. So this is an example of a good pile that we're about to pick up. Here's a good pile uh, that is going to be picked up. You notice the round drum on the leaf vacuum. There's an impeller in there, like, just like your vacuum cleaner at home, except this one is steel with sharp edges, uh, a, wavy, a wavy edge like a mulching blade on a mower, about 32 inches in diameter, and it, as it turns, it cuts and shreds the leaves. So this is probably the best of the best. You've got a bright sunny day, long and low, and nice dry leaves. By the time late November gets here, we're looking at mushed down, wet, compacted, snowy days. And sometimes frozen leaf piles. So it can be quite challenging. So we like to get as much of the leaves as possible uh, during the relatively hot and <laughs> dry days. Now, uh, starting up, it's a diesel John Deere, and here we go.
So as we see, obviously they weren't able to pick this pile up. Um, and I know we're not supposed to have piles in the road as well. Yes, that's dangerous because of all the water we're going to get with the rain. Can you imagine someone trying to stop their car when they're on a pile of wet, slippery leaves? Also, uh, children sometimes play in leaves, and we certainly don't want children in the street. So very important not to have leaves in the street. It's a safety issue. Protect our children, protect our traffic. And then also, if the leaves are in the street, look at the size of this equipment. I mean, look how big this is, this huge truck, this huge vacuum. They would have to drive on the wrong side of the street to pick up your leaves. Uh, safety first. That's why also we have a chase vehicle behind with lights and flashers so that protects the man running the hose. Also, the chase vehicle driver can switch off with the hose guy because these guys will work uh, long days, 12, 14 hour days doing this, this activity. I see you over there um, as well, Dan, if you could focus on uh, the fire hydrant. Um, the leaves have been left open for the hydrant, uh, which is important. Obviously, the hydrant is an obstacle, but also we don't want fire hydrants buried in leaf piles. Uh, we don't want your house on fire and not <laughs> to be able to find the hydrant. Bad idea. So, and then also, once again, the whole vacuuming uh, illustration of we don't want to have to vacuum around the, the coffee table legs if, if, if if we can put the leaves in a clear open area. So we have uh, Emily from our social media. Uh, I, I believe we have some questions in the comments. Yes, we do. We have so if you could fire those away, Tom will uh, answer them for us. Okay, uh -oh. we have a question from Randy and Beth Weiser. Um, she asked, can I keep parking my car on the street in front of my house during my leaf collection week? Please don't because we won't be able to pick up your leaves then because your car's in the way. And uh, we want to get your leaves, so please, no cars on the roadways during leaf season. Perfect. And Sonia asks, um, she says her tree lawn is very narrow. Um, should she put her leaves on the sidewalk or in the street? Oh, definitely. As close to the street as possible, but not in the street. So there may be some circumstances, and some residents have a, a sidewalk right next to the curb. We'd rather have them as close to the street as possible, once again, the hose is only so long, and I can't be driving the truck on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So on the sidewalk is okay? Yes. All right. Maureen asks, um, do you only pick up leaves in front of houses, or do you do businesses, churches? Um, and she asked, if we have leaves on our property, will you pick up those as well? Okay. <laughs> is her house, is, is her place a business or, or a church? I believe so. Okay. Well... Once again, this is a residential uh, leaf pickup program that is intended for the residents of Hudson as a benefit, but for businesses and churches, uh, we would expect that they would have their own uh, landscape company to do that for them. Okay. And Carrie asks, um, she says she's seen the leaf truck come by early on her street before the scheduled week. Will they come back during her scheduled week? Absolutely. Like we talked about, we make hay while the sun shines. So we're out there to get the leaves that are out there already as quickly as possible while they're quick to pick up. But we will be back according to the scheduled pickup day. Okay. Starting that quadrant. Perfect. Aaron also asked, what does the city do with the leaves after they are collected? After the leaves are collected, and you can see the 25 cubic yards there uh, that is not only those are shredded and compacted in that machine so they're like a big brick when they come out so those are taken to a local recycling uh, Hudson recycling uh, center and they make soil blends using that organic matter of those shredded leaves leaf mulch humus topsoil blends so 100 percent recycled Okay. Andrea says she has a narrow ditch with not much tree lawn next to the street, so it's hard to place her leaves without putting them in the ditch or on the street. Where would you put them? Well, once again, we're going as close to the roadway as possible because uh, of the hose being able to reach them. So it's going to be on the road side of that ditch. It's going to have some leaves in it, but not in the bottom of the ditch because they're going to be soggy. They're going to clog up your culvert and then we're gonna have a flooding event. Okay, I think we have one more question. Meg asks, what if there are twigs in the leaf pile? Um, does, 
does she have to pick those out? Um, or if there's branches, can you take those? There may be some small, tiny twigs as you're blowing your leaves, but we're talking branches, pencil size and up, can't take those. And then we'll have to skip that because once again, we, we don't want to either break the machine or clog it. We want to continue to pick up your leaves and, and provide a service, not with downtime, with, with broken machinery. Okay. Maureen asks, what if the leaves get covered in snow? Are you going to pick those up or do they need to do anything? <laughs> The same people that do the leaf pickup do the snow and ice control. So it's frequent here in the northern coast of the United States that we will get snow during our leaf season. So that, you know, the Halloween snow and, and, and uh, during November. So we may need to switch from snow and ice removal to leaves back to snow. But once again, after the, the roads are clear and clean and, and we don't have to worry about any ice, will be back during the schedule to pick up leaves. I'm laughing at the thought of the plow truck pulling the leaf vacuum. <laughs> Some days it seems like that. All right, we have another question from Sonia. Are you working on holidays like Thanksgiving or will it be over by then? Well, Thanksgiving will be off, but the day after and that perhaps that Saturday will be on. So, depending on the weather too. Okay. I think that's all the questions for now. I think my next question was going to be, what do you do after you collect them? But I think Aaron already asked that. So um, are there other options for people who don't want to participate in the leaf collection program? I know I have uh, wonderful woods behind my house that I blow all of mine into, but some people don't have that. Um, is there something else that they can do? I can think about at least three. Uh, one of them is just to grind up the leaves with your lawnmower back into your lawn. The best, the, <laughs> the absolute best possible thing that we can do for our lawns, our yards, and in the environment, uh, our ecology as well, is to grind the leaves back into the lawn. Because uh, to have a healthy lawn, we have to have healthy soil. Um, when we take a look at leaves and see the pile of leaves here, um, don't they look like uh, potato chips or raisin bran? <laughs> see, these are, these are, we can call them carbohydrates or carbon hydrates. And that is plant food. The, the soil needs uh, organic matter to be healthy. And that's where it comes from, leaves and grass clippings. So, um, if you Google soil food web, we can see how the soil is a living, breathing thing. And really, that's where the plants get their carbon dioxide. It comes actually bubbling up in the soil when there is carbon available. So grinding up, um, there are blades that are manufactured for motors, uh, mowers uh, called gator blades, and they have teeth on the back side. Um, and that actually helps shred the leaves quicker and faster. So working them back into the lawn to uh, build the soil organic carbon to have healthier lawn, shrubs, and trees. Number two is a compost pile. Now once again, the leaves are the browns, the carbons. To have a successful compost pile, we need the mixture of greens and browns. Lawn clippings, leaves, and then a little bit of shovel of an oculum from your mulch bed or from the forest. Put that in there, turn it occasionally, and water it once in a while in the summer when it's dry. Compost is fantastic. Third scenario, your garden. Do you have a flower or vegetable garden? Take your leaves. Perhaps you have a, a, a grass catcher that you can pick up the leaves with, and you're, you're catching all the leaves in that. Take that, dump it onto your garden, work it back in. When, you know, Ron, it's kind of funny. When we look at potting soil, potting soil is sold as it's mainly organic matter, like these leaves. So the, the leaves are like dollar bills. We're putting dollar bills out at the lawn, but our bank of soil organic matter gets poorer and poorer. So leaves are a good thing for those who wish to go the environmental route. Great. Rhonda, we have one more question. Oh, perfect. Um, Christy asks, why does the city start so late starting the collection? Um, why don't they start earlier? Well, that's a good question. Uh, 
the same folks who pick up leaves and plow the snow also fix the roads, fix the broken pipes, uh, do all these other things for the city. So what we're trying to do now is uh, patch roads and fix catch basins. So we try to do our construction season as long as possible. And that's about a six month, we have about a six month window to fix roads, fix pipes, uh, change signs and do all the other things that the service department does. But uh, once again, we look around too, there's a, still a lot of leaves up in the air. I was just gonna say above us that oak tree has not uh, started to drop yet, not even turned yet. And, and it's kind of funny as an arborist, I, I, I kind of watched, you know, this year the leaves dropped a little earlier. Last year they dropped later. We had a problem that we, our leaf season started and the leaves were still up in the air. So, you know, some, some seasons it seems later, some seasons it seems earlier. Okay, thank you. So, Tom, anything else you want us to know about the leaf collection program? Well, thank you very much. The cooperation is such a big part. You know, if you go to our city's website at hudson.oh.us and click on services and then leaf collection, uh, you'll see our map, the schedule, frequently asked questions, and, and really any information that, that tells about our leaf pickup program. And the take home, I suppose, would be if the leaves are next to the street, not by obstacles, not blocking the ditch, we'll do a, such a much better and faster job of picking your leaves up. And if we get a card, once again, we, 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 we want to pick up your leaves. Uh, basically, when you get the card, it says uh, it'll be checked as to what we need fixed. Just go ahead and get them closer to the street, take out the sticks or trash, and then we'll be back in two weeks to get those, leaf, those leaves for you. Great. Um, well, I would like to uh, thank Tom for, for being here. Tom, once again, is the arborist for the city of Hudson and obviously is the expert on the city's leaf collection program. And I'd also like to thank the wonderful leaf collection crew that came out to to uh, demonstrate what they do for us. And um, I'm Rhonda Kadish, and I thank you for tuning in to learn about the City of Hudson's Leaf Collection Program. Thanks, Rhonda.